What is up you guys? You're watching Surgeon's Secret. Before I get started with today's video, all the links for all the handbags will be linked down below for your convenience. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. So today's video is going to be my top handbags that I don't care for or that I don't like in general for the season or just bags that I haven't talked about um, ever on my channel. As you know, I've had a leave of absence and I'm back and so I feel like I have not talked about certain bags that have been popular. So for this list, there are seven handbags. I really was going through Neiman Sachs, Nordstrom, Bloomingdale's, Farfetch, and all these websites to find bags. I already had on the top of my mind like two or three of these bags that I don't really care for um, that I wore at the top of my mind, but I always see all these other bags. So I came with a curated list. I have my reasonings. I'm wearing this Vetmont shirt that says I don't care, thanks. So I do want to make a disclaimer because I know some people like to get a little bit offended. I normally don't do disclaimers, but I do want to say it. Um, these are these are my reasons why I don't care for these bags. If you have it and you like it, I love it. You like it, I love it even more on you. So please do not get offended. Please do not get upset. These are my opinions and there's nothing wrong with any of these bags or any of these brands. Um, these are just my opinions and and the reason why you're watching is most likely care about my opinions So I do want to say that and if you guys have any of these bags I would love to hear your readings on why you like the bag. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and get started with the first one Let's screw over a little bit to the side the first bag that I don't really care for at all is going to be the Lululemon belt bag and the reason why I do not care for the Lululemon belt bag is first things first I don't like Lululemon in general. I used to wear a lot of Lululemon in high school I have not worn Lululemon probably like in over two years. I sold everything that I have from Lululemon I may have like one or two things like around but I don't wear Lululemon just because I feel like the brand went on a different direction that I didn't want to be a part of as far as like they, they used to be like more low-key and I feel like they went mainstream and they started putting their logos and everything more pla it got more commercialized what I would like it so then I ended up going back to wearing like sweaty Betty and aloe I think those are a little bit more my preferences when working when working out in those type of clothing brands the reason why I don't like it is because I see the such like the ungenuineness of this bag I see so many bloggers so many youtubers so many content creators talk about this bag talking about how it's so great but the only reason why I was talking about so great is because they're getting a commission link off of it. And I hate to be that one person that puts everybody down, but it is true. The only reason why this bag is popular is because of the price point and also because all people are pushing it because it's an easy sell because the conversion rate for Lululemon is pretty decent, it's pretty nice. I feel like that's why people love the bag, people talk about the bag and rave about the bag. But for me, I don't think it's nothing special. I also have a Dagged Over fanny pack that I bought like three years ago that I use, so I also don't feel like I need the need of a fanny pack, but I don't know, when I see this bag, I just see kind of inauthenticity. I just see it being pushed for that reason, and the reason is because it's a mid-priced item and it's a very easy sell and people hype it up so it does sell out just like a Stanley Cup which I do have a Stanley Cup which I do like but that's why the store this conversation is a whole other video for a whole other day but I just feel like it's a little overdone in general and if I were going to go for a fanny pack um, around this price point I much rather go to the outlet and get like a really pretty like Kate Spade nylon uh, belt bag a little bit more but it's going to look a little bit more sophisticated and so that is my reasoning on the Lululemon belt bag. The second one is going to be the Marc Jacobs mesh bag. And you guys know I am a big Marc Jacobs fan. I love, love, love Marc Jacobs. But this bag right here got reduced. It came out like maybe two years ago. I think it's been coming out for the last few years around this time. The reason why I don't like this, but it's like una bolsa de mercado. It literally looks like my hometown in Mexico. It literally looks like a bag that I can go into the flea market and maybe pay like 100 pesos, like $5 for it, or like $4 for it. It just reminds me of that. The bag looks like it's structured, but it's really not. Yes, it's really nice to travel with, it's very cute, it's very nice, but for me, I already have like a lot of beach bags, I or like a lot of like summery bags, and also this is mesh, and it's large. I feel like people can see what you carry. And I live in Houston, girl, I live in Dallas, and um, I'm not usually the type of person to care about my like safety, like in that sense where like, Normally, normally nobody messes with me, but I don't know, just something about people seeing what you carry and you know, I do have like smaller bags that are a little transparent and stuff like that. But we're talking about a big bag, so somebody can see you're carrying your laptop, your camera, your wallet, you know what I mean? And you become such an easy target, especially if you carry this bag at night. I don't know, something about this bag, I just don't like that it's very like flimsy. Um, I think it's kind of expensive for what it is and also 
people can see what you have and especially if you live in the city I think that becomes quite a target because I feel like in the cities is where most of the crime happens I feel like if you live in the suburbs you should be fine but I don't know parece una bolsa de mercado like I keep thinking it's like a bag from like a flea market from tri like from right as they say la pulga like it looks like one of those type of bags so I'm gonna spend the money on a Marjico's bag I would get like the classic canvas, I would get a jacquard, I would spend a little bit more, get a leather. I think there's so many other beautiful Marc Jacobs tote bags in that family or in that collection. But the mesh bag is not something that I have liked. And also I did see like a lot of reviews last year that some of like the where it says Marc Jacobs, some of them kind of like peel it off and stuff. So I'm not a big fan of it. I don't care what size and what variation. I'm not a big fan of it. Maybe if it came in a micro, micro size where it, it is transparent and you can use it like as a concert bag to put your phone in your wallet and maybe like a lip balm. I can kind of see that happening. Like I said, I like to see the beauty in a lot of things regardless if I don't like it. Um, because I know everybody has different tastes. And I see why this would be practical, but for me, it's just a no. And it also looks like an employee bag. Like when you work at Saks, you have to have like a clear bag. When you work in certain stores, you have to have a clear bag or like a mesh bag like that. It reminds me of an employee bag as well. One is another Marc Jacobs. Damn, I'm coming for his neck. But don't worry guys, I'm about to come for Miss Toy Birch in a second. Um, the next one is the Marc Jacobs sequin collection, particularly they did a tote bag and a bucket bag this season. And this is pretty much giving me Victoria's Secret gift with purchase. If, if you guys don't know, I did work at Victoria's Secret probably for not even a month. I hated it so much, um, like back in the OG Sergio Secret days. And I just literally reminds me of a gift with purchase bag. It looks like a gift with purchase that we would do. We spend 85 during Christmas or 75 or whatever the minimum is now because I haven't shopped at Victoria's Secret in quite some time now. I think now it's like 85 to 95 or $100 is when you get whatever gift with purchase. So I find that the, like, it reminds me of that, like, around holiday, remember during Black Friday, people would go crazy over that free tote bag and it would have, like, some beauty favorites because that would be different because they would do the tote bags, like, throughout the year. But they would do, like, one during Black Friday would particularly have, like, some beauty items so people would be, like, even more crazier about it. And so it just reminds me of that. It reminds me of, like, hectic, like, back in the day when people would actually, like, line up, fight, argue at... Uh, you know, on Black Friday, it literally reminds me of that. So therefore, when I see that, I'm just like, oh my God. It reminds me of such a crazy, hectic time. And it reminds me of high school too. This is very much like 2014, 2015, like Victoria's Secret Fashion Show, London, or like Ariana Grande. Like it reminds me very much of that era. And I told this to my friends the other day. I was like, they, one of my friends asked me for my opinion on the bag. And I said, ooh girl, I might still go on eBay and buy myself a little $10 Victoria's Secret sequin bag and call it a day. And I know that these sequins on these bags are made out of the same sequins as the, a lot of the, like, the Celine accessories as well. The only difference is the Celine one a sequin moves and the Marc Jacobs does it. But regardless, it reminds me as a gift with purchase and so therefore, I'm not a fan. Now time to come for Miss Troy Birch. Miss Troy Birch, I have a bone to pick with you, okay? First things first is a Troy Birch McGraw crossbody. So one thing I don't like about Troy Birch is that she changes the exact same bag. There's literally nothing wrong with it and modifies it like anywhere from every 6 to 18 to 24 months. So like the Robinson has been done like 10 million times at this point. Um, all these totes, like all the best sellers, gets like modified every few seasons. And I think that kind of irritates me because I feel like you kind of have, it looks like whatever bag you already have looks a little like dated, even though it's like the same thing. I don't know, it's kind of weird. So Miss Tori did the Toy Birch McGraw crossbody. It is still the same price point. It is $2.98, but she made the logo a little tinier. Now this is the third time that she has changed the McGraw. When I was working at Nordstrom, they did uh, switch it, uh, they transition it to one style and then right now I'm seeing that they transition to other. So this is the third version and they made the, the logo a little bit tinier. Now I know like during like this economy, a lot of brands don't want like big plastered logos, especially in contemporary. So they're gonna start being a little bit smaller. I did notice that back in the last recession, that a lot of the branding is a lot more simpler, but I feel like this logo is not very proportional to the bag. I preferred like the like the bigger logo and it wasn't even that big to begin with. So you guys see both of them, the tiny one, the bigger one. I definitely prefer the bigger logo, even though it is a little bit more T. It's it's the same leather, so it, it kind of blends in a little bit, especially from a distance. And so for me, 
I don't know. I feel like don't fix what's not broken. And I think the McGraw was perfectly fine. I love the McGraw collection, by the way. And she changed it for all the variations on the McGraw. So even on the bigger bags, it has such a small logo. And I wish it was just the regular size that it was. Or maybe just even a little bit, but not to super, super string. So I would love to hear your opinions on the McGraw. Do you prefer it when it was a bigger logo, the original, or smaller? I definitely prefer it when it was original. I felt like it looked a lot better. I think it was, I think the logo matched the size of the bags. But now I feel like it's kind of like slapped on there, just slap on there. And also, Troy Birch and the off-price market, because, you know, she has full-price handbags and off-price handbags. Um, Troy Birch, in general, on the off-price market, she tends to do her branding a lot more smaller. So, the McGraw newer style is giving me very much off-price styles. And I wish it was just, I don't know. Don't fix what's not broken, Miss Tori. So, I would love to hear your opinion on this, because I've talked about this bag way back in the day and I still talk about the McGraw collection because it's still one of my beautiful favorite Troy Birch collection handbags but I would love to hear your opinion do you prefer the newer logo or the older logo that's definitely the real tea and the real question of this video because I would love to hear it this one is this bag's already on clearance it is already on sale it was only full price for one season and it went on sale and I'm pretty sure I know why so this is the Troy Birch canvas basket weave toe at $398 First of all, I felt like the size of the bag and the shape was like a little awkward, but also there is so much competition in the tote market now. I feel like maybe like in 2015 and 2016, 2017, Troy Birch really dominated the tote market, especially with the York tote, the Robinson tote, but I feel like Tory is kind of like struggling to be in that tote market. And let me tell you why. Because what, what totes do we have right now that are some of the two most popular? Obviously you guys know I'm gonna prefer one over the other. We have Mr. Telfar Clemens with the shopper tote, and then we have Mr. Jacobs, Mr. Mark Jacobs with the tote bag. Those two are probably the most popular tote bags in the entire market in the contemporary line. Anywhere where you go, um, these two bags are going to be the most seen tote bags that you're going to see anywhere. Yes, you may see like a Coach one, a Kate Spade one, a Demelia one, a Rebecca Minka pop up, you know, because they're still sold, people still like them. But if you're thinking about the top two totes, they're gonna miss toys not on that list it's gonna be mark jacobs and it's gonna be so far i'm just keeping it real and you guys know that i always keep it authentic <laughs> i don't know no se por qué so. so i feel like she's been trying to modify a lot of her totes and this tote as quickly as it came as brand new as quickly as it went on sale um i just feel like this tote was definitely a flop when i first saw it it's like a very neoprene kind of material the material was not durable i feel like for a tote you want it to be durable you want it to be wipeable especially if you're trying to mark it as to compete with like a tote for mark jacobs because they're very easy wipeable on the go type but i definitely think that tori missed the mark on this one i did not like it at all and there's a reason why it's on clearance now so the Tory Burch canvas basket weave tote was definitely a dud. I did want to talk about this like on a TikTok video, but I decided to talk about it on a YouTube video instead. But yeah, and any of you guys work for Tory Burch, definitely you guys know because I, I see everything as quickly as it went up, it literally went down. Um, next pack is guys, it's going to be Jack Moose. So for me, I have a bone to pick with Jack Moose. Well, not a bone. I do want to talk about two things about Jack Moose because I do get asked. First things first. I will always think Jack Moose as a summer brand, like a uh, spring and summer. I don't know, I feel like that's what it got introduced to me as. And so every time I see Jack Moose handbags, clothing, footwear, it always reminds me of spring and summer. I don't really think of Jack Moose as fall and winter. Maybe as the brand progresses, or maybe I see the items more in my face. Because here in Houston, the only place where you can buy Jack Moose is at the Webster, which is a boutique at the Houston Galleria. If, if Jack Moose is stocked anywhere else in Houston, I would love to know. And in Dallas, I believe Neiman Marcus uh, North Park has Jack Moose as well. I just feel like it reminds me of a summer a summer brand, but he came out with a new bag. It's the Jack Moose Puppy Bag. This is $11.45. Okay, amigas, what does this bag look like? What does this bag look like? I'll give you guys a second. Reminds me of the Coach Pillow Bag. And the Pillow Tabby is $550. This is $11.45. So you're basically playing double. It literally looks exactly the same as the Coach Pillow Tabby. I've been getting questions about the Jock Moose one. I think the Coach Pillow one, Coach for me, is a very all-year brand. Like, there's certain brands that I just think about certain times. Like, Montclair, Canada Goose. Like, Montclair can come out with a beautiful summer collection. But in the back of my mind, 
I'm always gonna see them as a winter brand. I'm not never gonna see them as like a hot when it's 120 degrees. Oh, I'm gonna wear a Montclair shorts and a Montclair tank top. Like that doesn't come to mind. I'm thinking of Jock Moose. I'm thinking of Totem. I'm thinking of other. But I feel like the Jock Moose puffy bag. It is cute, but it's literally a coat, a glorified coach pillow tabby for like double the price. Um, so I think for me, I would definitely go for the coach pillow. Maybe get it in two colors, baby. Maybe you can get like a black one or the cream one, and then get like a nice fun summery color. You get two versatile, or you can get one coach bag, and maybe get an, another coach bag. I don't really know. Or get a coach bag and then put that money in your wallet so you can spend it during the summer. I don't really don't know. But I do consider it Jack Moose as a contemporary brand or like kind of advanced contemporary. I don't quite consider it like designer or super advanced. I just think it's contemporary, like upper contemporary advanced. I don't. And the last bag that I want to talk about, guys, and let me know if there's any bags that you feel like you don't like or you don't care for. I would love to hear it down below. I try to really like see the beauty in a lot of items, but like I said, these are the top seven that I found throughout the entire website or through it everywhere that I don't care that I have not talked about. The last one is, I feel like the one that people are going to come for me the most, other than the lemon belt bag, is the original Bog Bag Toe. This is about $100. I've seen this bag in Dillard's. It just reminds me of Crocs. I don't know why. I'm not a big fan of Crocs shoes in general. It's probably, it has to do with because when I was growing up, my mom bought me like, what is it called? Airwalks. That one brand from Payless. And they're like uh, like the Crocs dupe because I don't because uh, I don't know my mom probably didn't know what Crocs what they were back in the day so I would make I would get made fun of when I had those shoes and I would wear them to school so maybe this is just my traumatized as a childhood I really don't know but this bag I'm just not a big fan of it as an everyday bag I definitely can see this bag as a tote, tote bag or going to the beach and like going to Galveston, going to Destin, Florida, going to Miami, going to Mexico. Like definitely I can see this bag if you're going to the lake for the day, if you're going to maybe Six Flags or Disneyland. I can definitely see the practicality and the utilitarian use of this bag. But I've seen people carry this bag as an everyday bag. If mommies or just people that work regular jobs, like at Target, I saw one of these yesterday. And I just, it does not, it's so casual that I feel like no matter how much you try to dress up this bag, it just doesn't work out. Like I said, as a beach bag, as a tote, like as a, like bags for that, for utilitarian reasons, I think it's perfect. But to actually use it as like a going out or like an office bag, I think that there's other bags that are more in that wipeable material that is a lot better and that doesn't look like a croc. I'm not a big fan of it. I've tried to try it on. I think it's a little too bulky, even for my structure. I feel like it just doesn't work out. So um, I've been getting my opinions asked about this one. I just don't really care for it. But like I said, I do see like, if I were to get one, I would definitely use it as a beach bag. It'd be perfect because and you can just shake the bag, you can, you can see everything, you can put your towel under there, you can take everything out, you can take all the sand and everything off. Like, I can see the practicality in it, but just as like a, as a city bag, I don't really see the practicality in it. In my top handbags that I don't care for for this season, I would love to hear your thoughts and your opinions down below. Um, do you guys have any of these bags? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you agree with the list? Do you not agree with the list? I would definitely love to hear it down below. Like I said, if you love the bag, I love the bag too. Um, but I always get asked opinions and thoughts about bags all the time. So I just decided to make it clear. These are the bags that I'm not currently loving. And I'll do some of my favorite contemporary bags that I'm loving on the next video. I want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I'll leave the links for everything linked down below. And I'll see you guys a la próxima video. Bye, guys, and take care.